Hey there, it's Tony Cole here, and welcome to episode 103 of the Dumb Leaders podcast. Today is a lesson for everyone, for everyone, because when did the news stop being the news? When did that occur? When did the news start being the narrative? And it's a question that really just needs to be answered. And I guess the next question that aligns with that is, what is the narrative that you're listening to and what is the narrative that you're believing? The world seems to be a mess and seems to be a mess that we're all on contradictory paths on what we believe or what you believe or what they believe is the best way forward. One of the things we know is that COVID has certainly created the perfect storm in relation to magnifying our differences and multiplying our approaches to life. One of the things that I know now more than ever is our approach seems not to be one of looking at the greater good or the greater benefit for the world in which we live. But for many people out there, there is the looking for echo chambers. Those like-minded people that we agree with, that we feel comfortable with. And sharing our thoughts, opinions and attacking anyone else that doesn't share those thoughts and opinions. Our thinking is definitely being swayed by the message that we're receiving and the messages that we're taking on to form part of our perspective. Our thinking is swayed by the messages received, the stories we're listening to, and our subsequent beliefs that are being forged from them. And more and more our tolerance and our respect for others that think differently is in being lessened by the minute, being lessened by the minute. If someone doesn't agree with us, we cancel, we block, we delete. Our thoughts are binary and increasingly becoming more binary by the day. Our beliefs are binary and never, ever the twain shall meet. Our thoughts, our beliefs are binary. Just as other people's thoughts are binary, we think the way we think, and we're not prepared or not willing to listen to valid argument, valid discussion, or look for evidence that doesn't sit within the biases that we have. Now, if you're on the left, or if you're on the right, it's my way, or our way, or no way. It seems to be the way. It's our way or it's no way. And how how did we get here? How did we get here? When did news stop reporting the news? When did they start being the purveyors of public opinion? When did they start being the public relations experts around the narrative? When did media news organisations start presenting a narrative. So that the news that we're seeing, whatever channel you're listening to, is aligned with the narrative. So using the US example, those on Fox present their narrative. Those on CNN present their narrative. Their narrative isn't news. It's just the way they're viewing the news. It's incredibly damaging. It's incredibly damaging. And we're seeing this play out. We are seeing this right around the world play out. And can I tell you, there is people there rubbing their hands with glee at the way that the ordinary people, the average bloke, the average woman, the average person is being played by this media narrative. And there are people rubbing their hands together because of what it presents for them. 
People have become the pawns in the bigger game. People have become the pawns in the bigger game. And it's a strategic game and it's linked and aligned to someone else's agenda. It's not linked to your agenda. It's not linked to my agenda. It is linked to someone else's agenda. Now, once upon a time, we were all raised to be the best that we can be. We, we were raised by um, however we were raised. And we were raised with the a thought of hope that we could achieve whatever it is that we set our mind to achieve. Now, we know that that's not entirely true. We know that life just isn't fair. I was never going to be an MBA all-star. My upbringing, potentially even my race, um, the country where I was born, all would play a role in that never being an opportunity for me. My dislike for basketball is probably something in there as well. See, life isn't fair. But we work with the gifts that we have. But that no longer seems to be the message. The message that's being driven to each and every one of us is more about expectations. You should expect to be the NBA all-star, even if you can't play the game. That seems to be the message that we're given. The media, the narrative is providing that expectation that we can all have this without necessarily having the skills, the ability or the discipline to work hard to achieve whatever this is for you. There's all these people that are out there that are evil, that are stopping you from getting what you justly deserve. Whatever those expectations are. But life's not fair. We know it's not fair. It's never been fair. Life has been built around the concept of survival of the fittest. And no matter who's listening to this, you are the product of that. You are the product of a long lineage of survival of the fittest. Your ancestry have overcome much greater odds than anything that we have ever faced in our lifetime. And you are the product of that standing where you are. Stronger, you're braver, you're wiser, yet in many ways we're becoming weaker. In many ways we are becoming weaker. There is an expectation that we can all live this wonderful life. And it's simply not true. It is simply not true. There are many out there that won't put in the work to achieve any semblance of life. And yes, I know that there are many people that have had hardships done to them from other people. The the reality is expectations are not life. And even when we do work hard, we do knuckle down, and we do have a level of achievement that still doesn't guarantee that that achievement, that success, that life that we want to lead is always going to be there. Someone may be better, someone may be stronger, someone may be faster, smarter, more creative, a better critical thinker. We all have gifts that enable us to achieve the level of success that you can achieve. And if you're not utilising those gifts, I'm really sorry, you can't expect someone else to do the heavy lifting for you. There are so many people that just don't want to do the work. And I acknowledge that there will always be evil people. There will always be people focused on power, on domination. There will always be bullies. Just as there will always be people comfortable with themselves, comfortable being alone, comfortable with their own company. There will always be people like that, just as there will always be bullies. There will always be people who get that um, dopamine hit from powering over people. Unfortunately, that's part of the human condition. And while we can certainly and influence those people, that that is no longer as acceptable and appropriate. The reality is we're not going to influence those people by blocking deleting and rioting. It's certainly not going 
to be the case. You know, slating every male because some are rapists is ridiculous. Slating every police person because some are bad is ridiculous. And when I say bad, that's not just about, you know, uh, the unfortunate things that we do see in the, in the States. We do have a disproportionate amount of crimes being committed by certain minority groups. We do have that. But we're also creating a narrative there that they don't have control over their situation, which is something I would firmly disagree with. But we've always had police officers that have been on the take. We've always had corruption. Part of the human nature. It's a human condition. We need to have ways to weed that out. And we need to be comfortable and trusted that we weed that out. But we just can't be taking law and order into our own hands. I would hate to see a world without any form of law and order. And the people that are calling for that are probably the ones that would suffer the most without law and order. So I really want you to think about what is the community that you want to be living in. Because I'm not sure if utopia exists unless we do have the law and order. Life's not fair. Removing law and order doesn't make it any fairer. In fact, I would almost guarantee that we would get to a historically quick total unfairness in society where the big would dominate, the powerful would um, plunder, and everyone would be everyone else would be sitting there scratching their heads and saying, why did we go through that? Yeah, removing law and order will not make it any fairer. No, be, believe me, please. I don't ever want to live in a community where we have no law and order. Now, the word unity gets bandied around quite a bit, especially since the new administration in the US. You've really got to question what does unity look like, feel like, and what does it actually mean? I'm positive that if the United States were ever under attack, the people would unite in a far better way than what they're uniting at the moment. But why does it have to take something like that for people to unite? I'm not sure. We now see women. You know, one of the things that I, that I, I get really... We, we get a way of thinking and we start to splinter that way of thinking. Now, we see women in the world today. They're on the platform for female empowerment. Now, Richard Dawkins says the world, um, uh, there's a famous quote from him that talks about the world will not be a better place until we embrace the concept of female empowerment, or words to that effect. And I'm a huge supporter in that. Huge supporter. I do believe in female leaders. I do believe in female empowerment. But we see females eating their own, eating their own, Instead of supporting all women and having that as a platform, it becomes a supporting only the women who share my beliefs platform. Once again, we're splintering. So instead of all women being united on the same path, we have splinter groups. And splinter groups don't work. We see it in the, in the rain that we see in the United States with Black Lives Matter. Heaven forbid any American who disagrees with that particular platform. You'll be shouted down. You'll be called a racist. Um, if you don't hold the ideals of that organization, you are eaten alive. Whatever race, whatever color, whatever perspective you share, if it doesn't fit the narrative, you'll be cancelled, you'll be blocked, you'll be deleted. Disagreeing commentary is blocked. We see that time and time again. Valid arguments that are raised against certain ideologies. And we see this through our social media platforms. Our social media platforms have suddenly become the purveyor of the narrative. The purveyor of the narrative. But, and we see people blocked. We see tweets deleted. You know, and, and we see people being um, put on. And this concept of community violations has become a weapon. 
It's been weaponized because the algorithm supports it. The algorithm supports any sort of violations or reporting. It, it supports that, that reporting as a weapon. And I'm not saying there's no hate speech out there in the social media world. Of course there is, and that deserves not to be there. But just because someone doesn't share your perspective and your thoughts, is that really the reason to um, formulate a mass campaign of a community violation? To get that person blocked, cancelled, deleted. There's some horrible keyboard warriors out there. I know that. They deserve to be... Their comments deserve to be deleted. But the reality is if they're not in the discussion, if they're not in the commentary, you're never going to change their mind. And the last thing that you really want to be doing is sitting in an echo chamber of people that think exactly like you or that are going to pat you on the back for being the fierce warrior, sharing your opinions amongst everyone else who has the same opinion. That's not going to influence change. That's not going to create change. That's not going to create a better world. Respect, tolerance seems to be in incredibly short supply. We attack the individual. We mock the individual. We do not influence change through insults. We limit the impact that we can have as individuals and we will never get the improvement that we're seeking by operating in this manner. Whether you're right, whether you're left, whether you're centre of the pile, the only way, the only way that, that your thought process can change, shift, is by influencing others through valid discussion, valid reasoning and facts. Otherwise, it's sad because nothing will change. And can I tell you, we need change. And as I mentioned before, we see often these binary thinking groups, we see them splinter. We've seen it before. We've seen it on the left side of politics. We don't just have left and right. No, of course not. We've got extreme left. We've got far right. We've got near left. You know, we've got center right. You know, we've got all these factions within a faction. Unbelievable. And if we're talking about niche groups, think about the atheist community. Instead of a community united on a on an ideal or a belief, we see splinters based around, you know, different thought processes, different patterns. We have rifts in the atheist society. We have the rifts, in, say, within the atheist community of people that believe they should be taking on further causes and not just their own. And then you've got other people that are just so flat out trying to work through their own emotions. So we see rifts. We see that in the conspiracy theory world. You know, you look at the flat earth community, you would think a community that shares a belief that the world is flat would be similarly autonomous and common. But no, there's about 4,000 different models of what that could look like. And they've all got their own way of thinking. And they are all quite happy to attack personally others that don't think their way. We crave being connected, don't we? We crave, we crave being connected to someone or a group that thinks like us. And then somewhere along the line, we align to a more specific line of thinking and we splinter from the main group. So I've got a challenge for everyone out there and I really want you to take it up. I want you to listen to someone else's opinion. I want you to read widely. You know, I want you to look at both sides of an issue. If you're only listening to Fox News, listen to CNN. But don't listen to CNN with a with the concept of confirming your bias as to why you listen to, to Fox News. If you're going to read this newspaper, make sure you read the corresponding newspaper. Make sure you go into a Twitter fight. Well, actually, don't go into a Twitter fight. Go in and try and understand what's going on. You know, even when we look at the election fraud issue that uh, was um, raging in the United States, we see some people that believe the narrative that there was fraud, and you've got other people that believe the narrative that it was all debunked. 
And funnily enough, what we're starting to see now is counties and states that are actually investigating some of the allegations and finding some of the truth in the matter. Only it's there. If you go looking for it, you'll find it. But if you don't want to find it, of course you're not going to go looking for it. If you believe a narrative, you'll believe the narrative. And you don't want anything that's going to contradict your narrative, do you? So listen to someone else. Read widely. Don't get caught in your echo chamber. Because if you do get caught in your echo, echo chamber, what you will find is that your chamber will shrink. And you will look around in 20 years' time. And the world will still be an unfair place. The world will still be an unfair place. And you will have think and reflected that you've wasted your opportunity to change not only you, change others around you and impact on the goodness of change that we actually need in, our, in, in the world. You will have wasted your energy being in your echo chamber. Being comfortable with the thoughts and recognition and the cheers of people like you. People thinking like you. So if you want to make a difference, it's all about you've got to influence others who don't think like you to start sharing some of your beliefs or at least being prepared to listen to your beliefs. And that is only going to come around by you being prepared to listen to other people's beliefs. Personal attacks, insults, they don't influence. People just drop out of the conversation. It doesn't change the way you think. You may think you've scored a win by blocking, deleting, or having someone drop out of the conversation, but you haven't. You haven't scored a win. You haven't changed that person. You haven't changed the way they think. All you've done is they've taken their energy somewhere else. If you want positive change, you've got to instigate influence. To get influence, you've got to influence people that don't think like you. How do you do that? How do you do that? Hey, thanks for listening. I hope that you've taken a couple of things away. I shall see you all again on the next episode of the Dumb Leaders Podcast.